Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Hard Time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode, we begin by trying to get Jeb and Bill back from Duna and Ike respectively. They have fulfilled their contracts, so plant a flag on Ike and on Duna as well. So all is well in terms of the science department, though it doesn't show us that here. I hope they fix that in the next version. I don't know why when we uh, go sufficiently far away from Kerbin, we lose track of all of our funds, our, our standing, and our science. But anyway, time to plot for the trip home. So when I tried to plot for Jeb's return trip, it, uh, it turned out that Ike was getting in the way, so I decided to handle Bill first, and Bill actually has to get into orbit around Duna first, because he's got his uh, orbit around Ike. And it looks like it's a fortunate uh, return orbit, so uh, you want the apoapsis to be on the side where you're going to be boosting out, and the periapsis to be on the side where you're going to be doing the burn. And if you look at where our orbit is, you can see uh, we're going to be wanting to uh, burn out in this direction. So we're going to do the burn on this side and then have our orbit extend this way to get back to Kerbin. If we were going to Joule, for instance, we would be burning on this side to extend our orbit this way. But uh, yeah, so since that's the situation, uh, this is the uh, orbit that we end up in if we get into orbit around Duna, so that's the right direction. Okay, so I'm just going to do this burn. Okay, uh, maybe we can tighten it up on the periapsis side. All right, now let's plot the return trip for him and see if Ike is out of the way. It should be. I mean, it's all the way over here by now. Okay, well, it wasn't as uh, fortunate as I would have liked. We end up burning out from here, and that's b basically because of the distance we are from the actual correct phase angle with Kerbin. But uh, yeah, it's still it's in the right direction, so it's all right. You can see it uh, continues out from this direction, so it's okay. Uh, but uh, he's got two hours and twelve minutes to get to it, and I think Jeb will be uh, at the right location for a burnout first. So I'm gonna switch to Jeb. Okay, I think I've got it plotted here, and so this is Jeb's trip out. And we'll have to do a mid-course plane change. Well, I don't know. Seems like we're pretty close to the descending node. Maybe I should fix it here. So what we do is we'd go like that, and we end up in a crash course with Kerbin, I think. Let's see. Okay, I think I've done enough tweaking. All right, here goes Jeb's trans Kerbin injection burn combined with a slight inclination correction. Okay, fine tuning it, seeing how close I can get here. Uh, about uh, 1.5, oh, 1,500 kilometers looks about right. Let's try small bursts in other directions. Uh, 1.2 maybe. Okay, I'll keep it there. Alright, uh, so Jeb is on his way back. Let's take care of Bill. And Bill ends up about 5,500 uh, 5, uh, kilometers. So... Uh, we could probably get a little bit closer. Okay, that's it. Uh, about 2,800 kilometers. All right, so I think that's that's pretty good for for approaches to Kerbin. And so we'll do any other corrections once we get into Kerbin's sphere of influence, instead of trying to do any mid-course plane changes. So our two guys are on their way back home. And while they're on their way back home, we'll do the jet test, and then we'll come back to them after the jet test to bring them back to the surface. Uh, 
The reason being that we do have enough science. Uh, let's, let's go back to the Space Center. As you can see, we've already accumulated enough science to get the rapier engine. So I'm going to unlock it now. And that's really the only part we absolutely need, but I might as well get some of these others for future activities. Um, oh, I like the standard canard too. Don't know about this thing. I never liked the advanced canard myself. I know there are people who slap it on everything on the front, but it looks horrible. Anyway. So, yep, I'll hold it on, hold it there, and yeah, let, let me not unlock anything else just yet. All right, so let's turn to the SPH and uh, reconfigure the craft that I was focused on. Okay, I think I've got everything right, but why does the center of lift seem further back than it used to be? That I don't know. Seems... no, not those. Very strange. So I'm, I'm starting out with uh, four rapiers. And if I need to, I'll go to uh, two jets, two rapiers. Uh, the reason is, uh, take a look at the stats here. In, uh, in jet mode, the rapiers generate 190 kilonewtons of thrust. In uh, jet mode, the turbojets generate 225. That's at altitude, though. At sea level, it's less, I believe, and so, but that's true of the rapier as well. But uh, so, what that means is that this with four rapiers, it might not lift off the ground, and then at altitude, it might not get to a sufficient speed so that when we change to closed cycle mode, rocket mode, that it will be able to reach orbit. If that's the case, then we might need the turbojets in order to get it to a fast enough speed at altitude in order to get to orbit. But then again, uh, the, just having two rapiers might not be good enough in order to uh, make orbit. So it's sort of a weird balancing act we've got here. It's uh, safer in theory with four rapiers rather than two. But uh, if we can't get off the ground, we can't get off the ground. Now, uh, I've only got liquid fuel down the center here, if you recall, so I'm going to have to actually feed uh, some fuel in from the outside in if we're going to go to rocket mode on all four. And so that's good. And if you're going to have four rapiers, you might as well. So now we've got the intakes here. And so when the intakes toggle, we'll also want to switch mode on the rapiers. Now, there is a difference between the two sets of the rapiers because the center ones have ad the advantage of all this liquid fuel in the center, but the outer ones don't. So we will want to be able to switch off the outer ones and uh, keep on the inner ones. So we're going to have a toggle engine and... Oh, that's the cargo bay doors. Uh, let's move those out and I'll toggle the these engines like that because we will want to be able to switch them off just in case. And, uh, and just in case is in case of an abort because we will need to pop the parachutes in that case. Um, maybe we shouldn't have all four of them switching mode at the same time. Maybe we should uh, switch mode in sets as well. So we can have uh, the outer ones switch mode, then the inner ones switch mode the outer ones toggle and then the inner ones toggle and then oh okay hold on and then the cargo bay doors and then I had wanted to be able to deploy oh I hope I don't have that yeah I still have that here so seven will be deploying this last pair of chutes for drag so deploy and then I want to be able to cut those shoots if I no longer need that drag. I don't know if it's good to have them pop out or they might rip up the whole thing or something I don't know. But anyway I think that covers everything. Gonna save here. Well Either it works or it doesn't. I don't like that the center of lift is a little bit further back than I thought it would be. Hmm. 
Let me just check that. Maybe at some point I should uh, add oxidizer to those. But anyway, all right. I think it's time for the test. So let's find who our test pot is going to be. Well, we don't have too many. Let's just have air top. Go for it. He'll be our sole test pilot trying to bring this to orbit. Okay. Well, while its lights are particularly brilliant uh, during uh, the night time, I think I'll want to add brakes and a time warp to daylight just for the heck of it. Let's get a proper view of this thing. Okay, all settled. I'm not going to rev up beforehand though maybe I should we'll see let's see how it works out in this situation and if I feel like it's not going to be able to get off the ground with this thrust I'll try and uh, stop it before it gets to the end of the runway I'll feel it out we'll see okay airtop Kerman going to try to make orbit let's hope we don't have to rescue him in orbit again oh uh, that's a good point I don't want automatic switching on here so I'm gonna go to manual switching on everything weird lighting effects because the runway is destructible I think don't know what that's all about really okay I'm trying to rotate to see if we've got lift Yes, we do. Okay, so we can we can lift off. Yes, we can. Okay, good. Gear up. Of course, during the climb, the fact that the rapier engines have less thrust means that we're going much slower, and it's going to take us a lot longer to get to altitude. What's the actual thrust? Right now, they're only outputting 97. So that's uh, about half of what their full rating is. We're not getting very many rescue or Kerbal missions. I hope we get more of those because I need. Uh, I said I wanted to flesh out my astronaut corps by rescuing Kerbals, but we haven't gotten many of those missions, so that's a little bit tough. And of course, uh, this craft uh, would be very good at rescuing Kerbals, but if we don't have any contracts like that, we can't do it. Okay, so now at 11,500 meters, we've got 114 kilonewtons out of these engines. Still climbing. You'll note that the ISP is going down though. Strange. For some reason, I don't sense that we're getting as much intake air as we normally do. We've got all sorts of little intakes tucked in in opportune locations, but seems like these these little guys, structural intakes, don't really produce quite as much. Actually, if you notice, they've got a 0.01 intake air, but a 0.6 drag. So really, in terms of their drag, you would think that uh, their shape means that their drag will be minimal compared to the intake air they get. But in fact, if you divide it out, they're not very efficient in terms of intake air when it comes to their drag. 
this this intake seems to be much better so this is the point where we're struggling to go fast enough to keep forcing intake air in while also climbing if we add more thrust uh, we'd be doing a better job of climbing as well as getting more intake air in but uh, no such luck here Well, our intake air is getting pretty dire here. I'll watch for signs that one of our jets is losing thrust because of it. Level off a little bit more. 0.06 intake air. I'm surprised these things are still running. Geez, at what point do they run out of intake air? And will I get any sort of warning about that? Well, I can't take any chances at this number. I'm going to switch the outer engines to closed cycle mode. Looks like we've got a bit of overheating, so I'll throttle back a tiny bit. Okay, switching the inner engines to closed cycle. I'm gonna go for a hundred kilometers just to show that I can. Oh, uh, ah, the other ones will run out of liquid fuel because all the liquid fuel have been drawn from the other ones. So, uh, actually, uh, they'll shut down as rockets even if they uh, still have oxidizer. Right, right. So, so yeah, that's going to be interesting. Got to keep uh, our fuel dynamics in mind, our plumbing, if you will. Okay, our top Kerman uh, looking good for orbit. Of course, the troublesome part is getting him back down again. And of course, after this, we'll have to do payload tests. And of course, we'll be putting useful payloads into the bay. But we need to see what kind of payloads it can actually bring up. It looks like it has plenty of fuel margin. But once we load it up, I don't know. What's, what's its mass right now? About 25 tons. So, gotta keep that in mind. It might have space for like, uh, you know, two 4.5 ton tanks. I think that's about right. So, it might have space for a 10 ton payload, let's say. But it might not be able to actually carry that. Well, probably won't actually be able to carry that. 10 tons would be a huge addition to its mass. Okay, here we go for orbit. Which reminds me, I still haven't put RCS units on this thing. It's just reaction control and engine power right now. We wouldn't be able to dock with anything. Not that it has anything to dock with, mind you. Anyway, 104 by 125. Uh, let's say at our current apoapsis we bring the orbit down. Now, that's a little bit well, the planet will rotate, but not that much. Let's say over the Korean shaped peninsula. Twenty seven. Let's try that out for an approach. Not too sure. See how it works out. If all else fails, we can just go to jet power. You know, with everybody building really large space stations, maybe it'd be interesting to build a space station just with this. I guess we could... I don't know if uh, any of the other capsules would be able to fit in the bay, though. Probably not. Well, we can take a look at that. 
It'd have to be like the lander can or something like that. Okay. So the outer engines are now out. So let me just shut them down. And uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't, don't drift. Let us continue. Up twenty-five. Okay. Well, since we're just trying it out and trying to figure out what number would be best, I guess we'll try that one. Somebody noted that my solar panels are sort of in a precarious position, and this is true. I do intend to replace them with RTGs, so that's part of the plan. I didn't really want to rely on solar panels for this, and uh, I certainly didn't want them sticking out any other place because they'd ruined the lines. And this is a pretty sleek design as it is, so don't want to mess with that. So now we find out how good a job I did with uh, balancing this out for empty mass situation. Now that we've uh, burned up most of our fuel, is it still balanced? It's actually been a reasonably long time since I designed this. You know, it's been more than a week now. So I, I'm not, I, I hope I did that right. Uh, I've designed many things between uh, this design and now. Not all of them appearing in videos, of course, because they're for other things that may occur down the road kind of stuff. That's a weird little oscillating motion. It's sort of describing a circle with its nose. Gonna have it deviate less from its prograde vector right now. This is not a huge time for angle of attack. We'll probably be ending up short, but that's that's intended. We are going to use the jets to get us over the mountains and everything. Airtop is thoroughly thrilled. He's not stuck in orbit, that's for sure. going to switch modes on these engines now. We are now on air breathing. Oh, that's what I forgot. I didn't even close the intakes, did I? I have that action group to one, but I didn't actually do that. They've been open the whole time. Okay, well, anyway, they are open now. Okay, I think we can uh, angle down, actually. Doesn't seem to be forcing us to, but uh, we could do with some some descent air brakes would be nice actually <laughs> we're going a little bit fast we're not going to overshoot uh, based on just gravity but as we get lower we're, we are going to face a lot more lift than we have right now Let's uh, keep the engines off for now. I will want to idle them just to make sure that I can go around if necessary. Especially since we are coming in quite high. Pretty good approach though. Not, not a bad approach. I think I can get the gear down now. The fact that they're very short and uh, there's a tail scratching possibility, I have to watch out for that. It was not my plan to just glide in, by the way, and it's still not, but uh, the numbers are what they are. And I don't see any reason to turn on the engines just yet.
Nah, we're losing speed too quickly. Gotta turn on the engines now. Just those two. Make sure we're uh, air breathing. Okay. Well, for an, an initial test of this system, this has been very good. Well, I say that before actually touching down, so that's a little bit of a problem. Must not do that. Okay, here we go. Three hundred. Two hundred. A little bit long. One hundred. Uh, too much lift. Okay, touchdown, brakes, 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 brakes. And there you have it, Ertop Kerman. Reaching orbit, returning, still got uh, 370 liquid fuel, three, 471 oxidizer. Uh, looks like this thing can carry cargo up to orbit without any problems. Uh, We've, we are carrying mod propellants already because it uh, comes with the 75 mod propellant comes with the clampatron here so uh, and we've got an additional 15 up front so really all we need to do is slap on the RCS ports and we're uh, good to go for docking stuff so yeah I think uh, this is excellent let's recover vessel and then we'll turn back to our returning Duna and Ike missions So naturally, 100% uh, of the value of that craft was returned, which is 83,000, uh, minus the fuel, of course. And Ertop is available for further missions. Okay, let's, uh, actually, let's uh, take a peek in here. Ah, rescue Gus Bus Kerman from Kerbin, from, from orbit around Kerbin, I assume. Uh, Hopefully he is in orbit. But okay, yeah, that's something we will do in the next episode, I think. Testing turbojet. Uh, I, I won't pick up any more. I just wanted to check to see if we could get a rescue a Kerbal one. And we have, so look forward to that. But let's turn back to our Duna and Ike mission. Okay, so it's Jeb who will be arriving in the sphere of influence of Kerbin first. Again, we're not doing any... Uh, mid-course plane changes here so we're just going to take him out and we're going to get him back where he needs to be because we are short of Kerbals for missions okay uh, Kerbin Sphere of Influence and looks like we need a combination inclination change and and orbit adjustments in terms of getting closer to Kerbin. Wow, we've, we've actually got quite a lot of Delta V now looking at it. Oops, too much. I'm gonna try for 32. Maybe a little bit less than that. Oh, okay. 30, 30 kilometers-ish. How long till we get in 20 hours? I think that'll still be before Bill gets into the system. So let's try it out. Well, now the question is whether Jeb might be able to land his, his whole pod rather than just... Uh, just the top, uh, I mean land the whole lander instead of just uh, 
top portion, the command pod. We've got some fuel left over and everything. But we're gonna be hitting the water. Okay, not bad actually. Uh, 8.9 meters per second. 8.8. Um, Let's wait until we're 200 meters above the surface before slowing down. Okay. Alright, so uh, Jeb made sure his entire lander got returned, so that somewhat makes up for the fact that he's on the other side of the planet from the KSC. Let's recover vessel. Okay, 309 Science was on board. That's not including anything that was transmitted, of course, which is partly the reason why we were able to unlock the rapier ahead of time. And uh, 5,600 funds recovered, 56.5% uh, of the total value. But most importantly, we got Jeb back. No additional reputation, but that's not what we are looking for when it comes to getting Jeb back. We just want him back. Uh, though, really, our reputation should be much higher given our given our successes. All right, uh, on to Bill. Okay, Bill is now in Kerbin's sphere of influence, but he's very high over Kerbin, so need to correct that. Bill has a lot more fuel than Jeb did, so no reason why we can't get him in an even better position. But we'll just have to see about that. Okay, it looks like 31,600, but uh, oh, just turning around changes that. Okay, uh, we'll get closer before trying to adjust that. Uh, Jeb was quite low at 30, 30 kilometers, so so maybe we want to be more like 32 to 34 ish. Okay, 33.2. That's what Jeb uh, Bill will do. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Flame effects. Bill. Bill is in orbit, I assume. Yes, camera change and everything. But will it be a direct descent orbit, or will we actually get to have some more control? It's it's not bad. We could probably, if he uh, makes orbit, we could probably start a retro burn to get to the KSC pretty much immediately. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just retro burn now. Oh, we're we're very far north, darn it. Um we've got some fuel. Uh some north means south. Okay, let's do that. Lots of fuel. There's a difference between landing on Duna and landing on Ike. Okay, let's see how it works. Here we are, there's the KSC. Clearly very high. Still, I think, too much. God, there's a lot of Delta V left over in this thing. Probably still gonna overshoot, but I want to make a soft landing. So uh, with the with the lander portion. So since we're gonna try and keep all of that intact, I don't want to burn any more to bring this in. Yep, we're gonna end up about 70 kilometers away from the KSC, a little bit more than 70. That's further than I would have liked, but better than Jeb did. So I guess Bill can be proud of that though he did have the advantage. Okay, and there we are, Bill Kerman. Successfully splashed down, let's recover a vessel. 
And plenty of juicy science. 331 science earned. Pots recovered 94.5% of total value. 9,400 funds. All good. And Bill Kerman is back. So there you have it. Uh, two missions returned. One from Duna, one from Ike. Uh, planting flags on both of those. And also a successful test of our space plane now with four rapier engines. I guess that's the configuration I'll go for. Uh, since it was successful, there's no point trying to uh, confuse things with a different engine configuration. So, with that, uh, we'll see what I can do with our science and our funds in the next episode. We do have a Kerbal to rescue, don't forget about that. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.